Shalom Chavarim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live and just kind of going back and looking at some things that have been happening since the uh, ceasefire that began in southwestern Syria there, right there on Israel's border on the Golan, as well as on Jordan's northern border there, and where ISIS and Al-Qaeda have their stronghold. And of course, the Syrian military had been doing very good headway in trying to defeat this. Uh, these these different groups there and of course Donald Trump and President Putin supposedly they have worked out a deal for a ceasefire in this area which I always thought is kind of odd but already Israel is not happy with the idea of Russian police being uh, on its borders and I can understand Israel having an issue with an Iranian proxy force on their borders or an Iranian militia or anything like that or Hezbollah on their border supposedly keeping the peace but the Russian police that seemed just a bit strange to me that Israel would have a problem with that but instead they have made their their uh, petition known to the US uh, government that they want a US military presence on the border of Israel now for Israel's sake yes I can understand uh, that would be more favorable for Israel, at least seeming to be more friendly in that regards there. But then again, Russia and Israel are also very close allies. So it just makes me wonder why would Israel prefer the United States over Russia with both countries being their allies, other than the fact that we now have President Donald Trump as president and Israel may feel even more safer. But you know, the United States changes so frequently. I mean, it wasn't long ago when we had Barack Obama, which if he would have had uh, American troops on the border, wouldn't have been a good thing at all. But I've been wondering about this, and I cannot help but think that perhaps what is really going on is that Israel uh, protesting Russian military forces on its border there in favor of US military forces is only a setup and that it's actually Israel is under pressure by the US government to do so the deep state that is not necessarily President Trump President Trump would probably gladly do it anyway but I can see where this is actually going this is being a setup in order to be able to put a stronger military presence for when the day comes in the not so distant future for the taking down down Damascus, U.S. military would have a far greater staging area at that point. Don't forget, the U.S. has also sent in its military equipment already to Lebanon, uh, probably still sitting on the ship, but you can guarantee one thing, this has been in the stages, a plan from the very beginning, only to be able to move in all these troops there, to the west, to the south, to the east, of Damascus for that fateful day when Damascus shall become a ruinous heap and shall cease from being a city and the fortress of Ephraim shall also cease uh, and that being the descendants of the house of Israel there that ended up believing the very message of Yeshua Jesus Christ that is uh, so I just thought I'd throw that in there just to give you my own take on that, what I think about that. And also when we think about the ceasefire agreement and how that President Trump, President Putin supposedly hit it off so well, doesn't seem like things are going that well though when it comes to the two countries. Well, Moscow has, uh, uh, has now came out and said, may expel about 30 U.S. diplomats and free some U.S. assets in Russia. Now that's kind of a retaliatory measure for what was done in 2016 when um, it says here the two diplomatic compounds belonging to Russia were closed down at the end of 2016 as a part of sanctions introduced by uh, Barack Obama's administration over Russia's alleged interference in the U.S. presidential election, which Moscow has repeatedly denied. So Russia now... Getting off to a great start with Donald Trump, but fixing to, uh, you know, poke back a little bit at the U.S. for what the U.S. has been doing to Russia. Doesn't seem like uh, that cozy of a relationship, not to mention the whole issue with Donald Trump's uh, son and this uh, alleged ties to a Russian lawyer, etc., very interesting how things are playing out in this. And then we have Reuters reporting, U.S. deploys advanced anti-aircraft missiles in the Baltics for the first time. We're talking about right on Russia's doorstep, we're putting anti-ballistic missile systems, not to mention the huge military drills that are going off just outside of uh, Ukraine's shore there near Crimea, 
uh, the United States military along with the Marines, etc., doing landings and amphibious assaults, huge exercises going on there. Constant warplanes flying over the Baltic just to kind of tantalize Russia. You don't think there's a deep state involved, a military industrial complex uh, kind of poking at the bear over there to see if they can ruffle his feathers one way or the other. I have a feeling that President Trump, he may mean well, but that relationship just isn't going to hold long. Uh, also, China says China responsibility theory on North Korea has to stop. They've had just about enough of the United States running around saying that they have to be the ones to stop North Korea from what they're doing. Well, seems like President Xi kind of really let one of his own uh, diplomats there tell it like it is. He said, you created the problem, speaking about the United States, and the constant uh, uh, military drills that have been done on North Korea's borders and the pushing to North Korea to the edge. Now, that's the way they have uh, portrayed it, China has. Uh, so I kind of th thought it was kind of an interesting article, very interesting read there. Let me just kind of read a little bit. It says, China hit back on Tuesday, unusually strong terms, and repeated calls from the United States to put more pressure on North Korea, Korea urging a halt what it called uh, the China responsibility theory and saying all parties need to pull their weight. U.S. President Trump took a more uh, conciliatory tone at a meeting with China's uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping on Saturday, but he he has expressed some impatience that China has close economic and diplomatic ties to Pyongyang. It, it is, is not uh, doing enough to rein in North Korea. That feeling has become particularly acute since Pyongyang launched an intercontinental ballistic missile that some experts believe could have the range to reach Alaska and parts of the U.S. West Coast. Asked about the calls from the United States, Japan, and others for China to put more pressure on North Korea, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman uh, Jin Shuang uh, said it was not China ratcheting up tensions and the key to a resolution did not lie with Beijing. I guess that's kind of being pretty blunt about it. No wonder why the Pope of Rome is a bit concerned about the East and the North, China and Russia. And he is making sure that the military obeys him and not President Trump. All right, we also, another thing I wanted to share with you here, this actually is from uh, Louise uh, Loveworth, I believe is her name. Let me just quickly pull up the Washington Post there uh, to get her name. Yeah, Louise Love Luck. I apologize, Louise, for your name there. But uh, I wanted to share with you the photo that was on the uh, cover of the Washington Post, an article she did. It is an insightful uh, article. I, I encourage you to read read it there. Um, uh, we've written at least before, and uh, uh, some differing opinions on some things there, but she still does a very nice job in her journal, journalism. But when I saw the picture here that you're seeing on your screen and behind me here of uh, Mosul, just totally devastated. Uh, just a ruinous heap, a desolation, if you were. I was reminded how we've shared with you over and over and over the prophecies from the book of Nahum and Habakkuk, both prophesying that the ancient city of Nineveh, which is modern-day Mosul, would become a desolation. Uh, and that's exactly what we are seeing. And they call this, I thought it was interesting, Iraqi forces declare victory over Islamic State in Mosul, but fighting continues. And then, of course, they show the picture of a desolation. Not much of a victory. The, of course, I'm sure with, the, with ISIS and the way they rule, it was a victory for many, uh, even though they, it has become a desolation. Uh, but who created ISIS in the first place? need to think about these things. I also want to share with you, this here is from our good friend uh, uh, Lorenzo and Already Happened. He was sharing a video posted by Gulia Bito. Uh, this young lady here had posted this. She said a friend had given her this video. This is a major, massive fire that is raging in Italy there. Let me kind of give you a bigger view of what's going on here in this uh, video uh, so you can see this fire that's been raging out of control. This is way down there near Sicilia, uh, down there, in fact, not far from where the G7 summit was held just recently, this fire raging down there. Uh, and completely out of control. They're saying that they really wanted to see uh, more media coverage 
And so we promise to do our part to share that with you. And of course, you see Italy. This is way down here by Cantinia. Uh, Cantinia. Syracuse is easier for me to say. Sicilia, uh, right there. Just north of Syracuse, Italy, there is where that fire is raging out of control. That's been going on. I saw it this morning uh, when I was headed out to take care of some uh, errands here. And uh, But I want to just share that with you just so you can see it. It is a very serious, serious fire. Uh, Lorenzo had reported that earlier this morning as well. So we figured we'd throw that and share that with you as well. I'm Stephen Bernoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for watching. Uh, we will be going into depth about these things, uh, seeing as our latest discovery about the Pope of Rome admitting, coming out, and as if he was the king of the north himself speaking. I don't think he knew what he was doing when he said what he said, but he was certainly giving away a position. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and God bless you.